Welcome back to the Tennessee Valley this morning. Want to spank, thank, spank, <laughs> thank. Wow, talk about a slip of the tongue. <laughs> I want to thank our special guest, Becky Pico, and uh, displaying her artwork. Boy, that'll that'll be all over town before yeah. the day's over. One. Blooper reel. 703. <laughs> we have another special guest with us today. Before we talk to Richie, let's look at your weather forecast. It's shaping up to be a nice day. Today, partly cloudy, a high of 85, a low overnight low. Look at that, 61 degrees. Tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 88, a low of 63. And on Wednesday, again, partly sunny or mostly clear, as they say. Uh, high of about 91. So we're doing pretty good for the month of August. Uh, it's an indication that fall is on its way. And I know that makes you excited. Yes, it does. It's my favorite time of the year. <laughs> right now, it's a very pleasant 66 degrees. And you're watching the Tennessee Valley this morning. Dan Howell, along with my lovely co-host, Ginger Gobble, who is a barrel of fun, by the way, yeah. from Gobble Automotive. Go by and see her on North Lee Highway, and she'll feed you some chocolate chip cookies. And Mayfield I, ice cream. Yeah, and Mayfield ice cream. I bet Richie's been by there and gotten some cookies. <laughs> Do not yet, Rich. Richie <laughs> Hughes is but what He hasn't been by. He will now that he knows about it. He'll Shut be by up, Dan. <laughs> He'll be by there. Uh, Richie's been on before, and um, we were talking about some other things, but he's back because he has a brand new book that we're going to talk about today, and I'm interested to learn about this. Uh, it's always interesting to talk about, uh, talk about uh, books with people who write them and just find out uh, where the inspiration started and what the book about and what was the, uh, the choices behind uh, why they wrote it. And so Richie's here to talk about this today. And, and uh, by way of background, Richie is a, a local boy, That's but you went away for a while I did. and came back. And he's They home. always come back. They yeah. always. <laughs> you can go home again. Yes. You know, there's an old saying, you can't go home again. Well, Richie did. He came home again. And uh, you're here working, uh, I believe, in the uh, uh, hospitality industry, building a new hotel. Is Correct. that right? Building a new Holiday Inn Express at Paul Huff Parkway. And yeah. Managing the Mountain View Inn just above us here on, yeah. on the right, I guess, somewhere. Working with his father, Dale, <laughs> who is on the city council of the city of Cleveland. But uh, you've got uh, many interests, obviously, and this is one of them. Let's talk about uh, the book, and uh, uh, first let's talk about what it's about. Sure. Well, basically, Dan, the, the book evolves around choices because oh. I feel like every day we make choices. You, you kind of choose what time you're going to get up every morning mm -hmm. and start your day. You, you choose what you're going to eat, therefore you choose your health consequences. Uh, you choose where you're going to spend your time. I, I have a, an old saying that, the the B word is profanity. Busy. Mm -hmm. We're all busy. Yeah. I, I always was offended when my staff would come and say, you know, I meant to do that, Rich, but I got busy. Yeah. Well, we're all busy. We all make choices as to what's important in our time. Well, we do. In our schedule, in our calendar. So, I think each day we make a choice, a conscious choice, that impacts the rest of the day, that impacts the week, the month, the year, and ultimately our lives. Mm -hmm. And the title of the book is uh, I like the title. Start here. And it's got a start button on the cover. Start here and go anywhere. That's really a good title. And the subheading is making good choices, recovering from bad ones. And oh, I think we could all identify with that. Bad choices we've made, but, uh, but you can recover? Absolutely. And the title, you know, today you have an opportunity to start again. Mm -hmm. Past is past. Forget the past. Mm -hmm. Move forward. Start here. And from today you can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, the content of the book is, is, again, surrounded by choices, and I think what happens in our lives as we all go through, I, I like to tell when we speak in churches, we've all got stuff. Yeah. Everybody has stuff in their lives, mm -hmm. things that have happened. Everybody goes through challenges. Mm -hmm. We're not putting here on this earth. Adam and Eve figured that out a long time ago. We're going to have some challenges. But I think what happens is as we go through the day, we make a multitude of choices. And if you make bad ones, then we all do. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to make, at, at some point in time this week, you're going to mm -hmm. make the wrong choice. It may not be uh, something that, that costs you something great, but it's going to be the wrong choice. And I think what we need to understand is that we can recover from bad choices. Mm -hmm. We're not, that, that's not finality as we talk about in the book. Everybody's got faults. Everybody has failures. Everybody has fear. Mm -hmm. Everybody loses faith. Yeah. Those are the, the uh, chapters that we talk about in the book. All that. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we all do that. And I think if we can understand that when we fail, we get back up and dust ourselves off. Mm -hmm. I used to tell my kids when I coached basketball and, and football and things that 
the running back that gets tackled the most, that gets knocked down the most, is the guy carrying the ball the most. Mm -hmm. The guy that has the most opportunities to succeed is also the same guy that's going to fail the most. Yeah. So when you get knocked down or you get tackled or, or you feel beaten up or you have a bad day, you get up, you dust yourself off, you pray your way through it, mm -hmm. and you go after it again. Mm -hmm. This book was not just uh, an overnight uh, decision. You made a choice, but it started many years ago. Talk about the process of writing this book, Richie. It didn't just happen in a week's time. No, it didn't. Actually, about 10 years ago, when we started facing some challenges within our family, uh, I started just writing things. I, I, I like to journal. I mm -hmm. journal every day. So every day, you know, I make a choice to get up, get a cup of coffee, read the Word, and then I write what I feel like God's telling me out of my devotion time. Mm. So when we were going through these times, I was seeking in the Bible, you know, and from other people that, that are mentors in my life, how to help get through these challenges, how to understand what's going on and, and try to understand. But, uh, so I just would write a paragraph or two. And I've got a blog now that, that I write just what I feel like I'm supposed to write. And over the course of about 10 years, I had combined a stack of papers very random thoughts, none of them tied together, mm -hmm. none of them matched, but I kept, as I would read through it, I felt like the Lord wanted me to write a book, and everything seemed to tend to go back to choices. The more I would read my own studies and my own writings and everything, you know, I made a choice on this day in 2002, and then 2004, this tied back to that choice that I made here. Oh. So I thought, you know, the Lord gives us experiences so that we can share them with others. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just, we don't go through challenges and valleys so that we can get through that and then hoard all that information up. He wants us to be able to say, you know, Ginger, I, I had a, a relative that, that died of cancer, and here's what happened when you faced that challenge. Or I had a, a child that's doing something they shouldn't do. Well, there was a time when my child did that, and here's what we did, here's what we should have done, mm -hmm. learn from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. Maybe it can help you through that tough time. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting how journaling helps you tie the events of our lives together. There really is a common thread sometimes when you see the random events over a period of 10, 15, 20 years. And when you, when you journal it and put it in, in book form, it, it begins to make sense, doesn't it? It does. And at the and time, again, it just seems like random events. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, you make choices, and, and sometimes I feel like that, that God has a plan for us, and I'm pretty hard-headed, Dan. I, mm -hmm. I don't get it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be. Sometimes he'll show me what I'm supposed to do, and I'll, I, I don't know if that's God or not. It might be Richie talking, so it takes me a long time. Sometimes he just has to hit me over the head. Yeah. You know, like yeah. my dad yeah. used to do. I've been, I've been there and done that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, over the course of time, you can see mm -hmm. the choices that you made. You know, I look back at college, and I started out as a business major and ended up as an educator. Well, there, that was a choice that I made to change my major, which ultimately changed my whole future, mm -hmm. changed my destiny mm -hmm. because of what I chose my sophomore year in college. And I yeah. think we can all look back at choices that we've made, mm -hmm. where you live, the profession that you, the job that you're doing, mm -hmm. and how many children you have, uh, your choice of mate, yeah. your spouse. Mm -hmm. All these are things that, that totally define your life. Yeah, they do. Uh, and it's interesting that the choices we make sometimes can create uh, um, a good outcome or a bad outcome, and sometimes it can create compromises. Talk about the, right. that aspect of, of the book. It's, it's very good. We, we actually have core values that we know yeah. to be right in our heart. And, and what I encourage people to do, you know, a business has a mission statement, then it has core values. As individuals, we need to have a mission statement and core values. We need to understand what we believe before we get put into any circumstance or situation. So <clears throat> the chapter actually is Choices made, consequences paid. Mm -hmm. Because every choice brings about either a consequence or a reward. Mm -hmm. You have two things that will happen when you make a choice. You'll either receive a reward for a good choice mm -hmm. or you'll pay a consequence for a mm -hmm. bad choice. And what happens is if we compromise mm -hmm. on what our core values are and if, mm -hmm. we, if we say, well, you know, that's, that's cheating just a little bit, but nobody's ever going to know. Mm -hmm. Over the course of time, those compromises cost us great consequences. Mm -hmm. I uh, raised three boys whom I love dearly, and thankfully, they've all turned out pretty well. But one thing that I hammered home to them constantly is that you will live with the choices you make. And I especially hammered that home when they were teenagers or preteens. You know, you've got a choice, but you'll live with the choice you make. 
And uh, I think that's, that's true in every aspect of life, no matter who we are. Uh, we are created in God's image. He gave us a free will, and we have the ability to choose. Right. And uh, it's really a, a quite mind-boggling when you think about the fact that we can choose what we will do, what kind of, as you mentioned, what kind of, what kind of person we will choose as a mate, uh, how we will, uh, what kind of values we will choose to put into our children's lives, uh, where we'll go to school, right. those type of things. And they all impact uh, our future. And not just our future, but the generations that follow us. We're, no Man is, is an Island, I think that, that title of that book comes uh, to mind. But uh, have you found that to be true as, as you researched and, you know, and worked it, on this book, Richie? It's very interesting because one day, and again, random thoughts, but one day we were taking our children to the bus stop. This was when we were still living in Georgia about a year and a half ago. And I watched my two children get out of our car and they kind of apprehensively walked toward the bus. And I thought, that's very intimidating. Mm. I think back to Forrest Gump. I don't know if you remember that scene, but when he walked down the aisle, the gauntlet of the aisle of the bus, and the guy says, seat's taken. And then he goes to the next one, seat's taken. And I watched my daughters, you know, two little girls, getting on the school bus with, uh -huh. at that time in Georgia, it was all the way up through high school. So we had all ages of kids on there. I watched them look at this side. And, Am I going to sit here? Am I going to sit here? Is it okay if I sit with you? Am I going to get rejected if I sit here? So that choice, and then, then I thought, you know, when they do sit there, who's the child that they're sitting with? What kind of family does that come mm -hmm. from? Does that child's family believe like we believe, or do they not believe the same? Mm -hmm. What's on the iPod that mm -hmm. they're going to sit down and listen to right. and, and fill their thoughts with for the next 30 minutes on the way to school? So that particular choice each day in a child's life mm -hmm. is so important. I was a PE teacher. I can remember at North Lee School. Um, every day in PE, we would go outside and we would choose teams. Mm -hmm. captains would choose teams and I reflected back as I wrote the book you know every day the same children got picked first to play kickball mm -hmm. or dodgeball so the self-esteem goes through the roof mm -hmm. the same children got picked last mm -hmm. the same children didn't get picked at all mm -hmm. what did that do to their self-esteem mm -hmm. the, the choice selection is monumental in our lives every day from the time we're, we're children and we mm -hmm. don't really realize it at that time because as a child, as a competitor, as an athlete, I wanted to win the game. Sure. I wanted the best players on my team. But when I look back now, those same kids never got picked and had to go do something else. And I think, you know, are they okay? What did that yeah. do to their self-esteem as fourth and fifth graders? Yeah. So the choice selection is huge in our daily mm -hmm. lives. Uh, some people, we're all put together different, uh, but uh, the process of making a choice or making a decision sometimes, as I call it, uh, now I'm the person. I'm kind of the kind of person that likes to mull over a decision. I may mull over it for a day or a week, sometimes a month. You know, if you're buying a house or buying a car, you do research. But there are times in life when you have to make a decision. Now, a time of crisis. Right. How should you approach that type of uh, decision making and, and making a choice in well, a crisis? Very good. I, I think. Interestingly enough, I, I'm not smart enough to tell this part of the book. <laughs> I solicited some help from Dr. Susan Carter at Lee University. There is a psychological process yeah. that takes place every time we make a choice. Sometimes if it's that quick, we don't realize what happens, but there are three steps. Yeah. First, it becomes a thought. I actually have a thought. We're not as random and compulsive as people would have you to believe. There's a thought that triggers a feeling. Mm -hmm. You have a thought that triggers a feeling that thinks, mm, I might, I might want to do that. Mm -hmm. I think that that would be good for me or that would feel good. I would mm -hmm. enjoy that or something. And because of that thought triggers a feeling, mm -hmm. which then in turn becomes an action. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we can learn and train ourselves that as the thought enters our mind, if our core values are established and we can understand when that thought enters our mind, if that's not good for me mm -hmm. and there could be a potential consequence, clip that thought nip it in its bud, mm -hmm. don't allow it to happen mm -hmm. before you start having a warm fuzzy feeling about it and ultimately <laughs> taking action on that thought. That process is something that we go through on each individual choice. Yeah, I see. Um, now my thought right now is that he, he looks just like his dad who was the principal of the high school when I was there and I'm wanting to be very good and quiet. <laughs> You're making a choice to be quiet. I'm making a choice to be quiet because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> imagine, He's taking me back. Imagine going to the principal's office and it's your dad. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're talking to Richie Hughes who has written this book, Start Here, 
and go anywhere. It's about choices uh, that we make in life and uh, good choices, bad choices. We've all made them, but it's a very interesting conversation. Um, sometimes we make bad choices and uh, things happen in our lives and uh, I've, I've had those thoughts where I made a bad choice and you know a month or two later it's evident that wow I made a wrong decision. How do I recover from that? Can, can we recover from those bad decisions? Yeah, I think that's where I go back to the, the biblical base. I, I looked at it, Dan, from this standpoint. I, you know, in our, in our Bible reading, there was only one perfect individual, one mm. perfect person. Jesus walked the earth for 33 years, and, and he was the only one that was perfect. But, you know, when I think of David, we, we think of David killed Goliath. He, he was the man. But, you know, David was a murderer. Mm -hmm. David was an adulterer. David was all these things, but in the back of our mind, I think of David, a man after God's own heart. That's what the Bible calls yeah. him. We yeah. think of Moses, you know. Moses led the children of Israel, and he did all these great things, but Moses was a wimp. Yeah, the reality was. of it was Moses was telling God, no, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. Yeah. He's filled with doubt. Peter, I think of Peter, you know, Peter walked on the water, the greatest exhibit of faith, walking on the water, having done it, seeing Jesus, and then doubted and fell in the water. Mm -hmm. Denied Christ three times, but yet on the day of Pentecost, God said, you're going to preach, Peter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use you. So what I would say is when you fall, when you fail, when you, when you make bad choices, the recovery process can be tra tra uh, uh, go traced back to the Bible because we have positive, positive opinions of each of those Bible characters. Mm -hmm. We don't think of them negatively. No, and not. I think that's how God gives us the chance. And the way the Lord spoke it to me was it's in spite of, mm -hmm. in spite of your failures, in spite of your faults. I created you. I, my wife and I teach Sunday school, and recently we taught a lesson called God Likes Us. Mm -hmm. well, we all know He loves us, but Stephanie and I talk about the things that we like about each other because liking and loving are different. And I think that God, lo He loves us, but He likes that you communicate differently than Ginger and mm -hmm. I communicate. He likes that about us. Mm -hmm. He likes the way we look. I don't know how he likes this little bald spot back here, <laughs> but He truly likes us, and He truly wants us to succeed and it really doesn't matter what we do or what we go through. He's always going to forgive us and always going to can he's never going to cancel our assignment. He didn't cancel Peter's assignment. Mm -mm. Peter denied him, said, I don't even know the man. Mm -hmm. And yet he said, I love you so much that I want you to preach mm -hmm. on the day of Pentecost. And that's the way it is for us in our daily walk. As we make poor choices, as you, the listener, make poor choices, God's still going to give you another chance. And that's why the book's called Start Here. Mm -hmm. Start today. Forget the past. The past is the past. It's over. He's got great plans for you, plans of hope and a future, and it's something that you can do because you're equipped to do it. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the psalmist David, and he re when you look at his background, he really was a scoundrel. He was. He, I mean, he was a scoundrel. He, was. he could, committed murder. He committed adultery. He did all kinds of bad things. Yet, he, he knew the secret of... of um, Getting on his knees, didn't he? He did. And that's why he's called a man after God's own heart. Not for all the things that he, bad things he did, but because of the choice that he made to, uh, to recover from the bad things that he had done. Um, and so there, there, is, there is hope for us. And I think the measure of any person is not how many times they fall, but how many times they get up. That's right. And, and keep going again. You've got some great endorsements. I was looking on the back of the, of the cover here. Uh, Pat Williams, who's one of my favorite people, and of course he's been in uh, been in athletics for years and years and years. I've read some of his books, by the way. I'm sure you have too. Have. Uh, Pat Williams, senior vice president at Orlando Magic. Um, one of his books, Extreme Focus, a good book. I read that. Uh, Perry Stone, of course, uh, the voice of evangelism, who's written I don't know how many books. Uh, Reggie Dabbs, motivational speaker, author of Reggie, and uh, then Reggie Joyner, founder, president, Rethink and Orange Conferences, and then Grammy award-winning artist Israel Houghton. Did I pronounce that right? Houghton. 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 So you've you've got some great endorsements here. So that's a good indication that the uh, that the content of this book is quite impressive when you get that kind of an endorsement, Reggie. Well, I'm. I'm thankful to have some great friends uh, on the inside covers, Dr. Cole Pepper and Dr. Yeah, Williams from the yeah, Church of God right. that are great friends of ours as well. But uh, when we wrote the book, we just wanted to validate it. I'm a first time author. I'm not a pastor of a huge church. Yeah. So I was grateful to guys that would go out on a limb and say, I'm going to support this project because mm -hmm. I believe in it. And when I get the opportunity to talk to people about it, you can see I'm a little bit passionate about it because, you know, we've lived it, Dan. We've walked through some sure. challenging times. Our family has has faced challenges just like all of us. But what I want 
everybody to understand is that everybody faces challenges. Mm -hmm. We all go through valleys and the ground is the most fertile in the valley. Mm -hmm. That's where things grow. Yeah. So if we can understand that we can't live on the mountaintop all the time, but when we are going through challenges, let's understand that we need to study more and we need to pray more and we need to develop whatever it is that God's developing in us. Mm -hmm. The book is uh, published by Charisma House and I understand it's available in all bookstores, Amazon.com. Uh, it's interesting we're getting an Amazon yeah. distribution center just up the road here. But uh, it's available, it's out there, and it's called Start Here, Go Anywhere, Making Good Choices and Recovering from the Bad Ones. Wow, I think I could use this book. Uh, Richie Hughes is our guest and author of this book. Uh, was it a tedious process of, of compiling and writing this book? Did you have a ghostwriter? That's what people I always did. ask. I did. <laughs> I did. To be or honest, an editor, I guess. I had, well, I had, I had a ghostwriter and an editor. Um, a lot of times, like I said, Dan, I would write, and and when because of the things we were going through, I would I would pin my frustration. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I at one point in time, I think it's it's okay to be transparent. Say I, I was mad at God. I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And I think God understands when we don't understand that there are going to be times when we're frustrated. I'm the oldest of three children. My mother and father are are incredible people, mm -hmm. but I'm the only one still alive. Mm -hmm. So I didn't understand why my brother passed at 28, my sister at 32. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't grasp that. So I'm, I'm crying out to God, I don't understand this, God. Help me understand what you're doing. Why did this happen? And I think that we all go through those times. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes through, God, I don't understand this. This doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, mm -hmm. but to trust in the Lord. So I've learned that it's not my job to trust. I don't believe God's ever going to lay out you know, last week's economic crash. God's not going to say, hey guys, guess what? This week, the economy's going to crash, so take all your money out of the stock market because Tuesday is <laughs> going to crash. He doesn't explain himself. No, he doesn't he... explain himself when Congress and Senate and the President can't get together. Yeah. He doesn't explain himself when the NFL and the NBA can't get a collective bargaining agreement and we may not have basketball. They just finally got football together. Uh, I think of, you know, big news. He doesn't explain why the situation in Orlando takes place with a mother and her child and the, and the jury and everybody's going crazy over the decision in Casey Anthony's trial. So he doesn't explain himself and we're going to be, people are going to be on different sides of those issues. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn to trust God when mm -hmm. I didn't understand God. So being transparent in my writing it took 10 years mm -hmm. to actually take place because I would pin sometimes in frustrations and my writers and the editors would come in and say, that is totally out. You can't say that in the book. I wanted the book to be called Choices Made, Consequences Paid. The publisher said, nobody will buy that. Yeah. That's totally negative. And I, you know, I had to retrain my thought and my presentation to say, well, that's not what I want it to be. I just want everybody to understand how important choices uh -huh. are. So we came together and, and came up with a title that had a, had a hope and a future rather than totally consequences based. Right, right. Uh, you mentioned uh, trusting God when you don't understand. That's actually a, a title of, of chapter 12, How Can I Trust God When I Don't Understand? A good example of that, you start off by talking about Job. Uh, Job was probably the, one of the richest mans of his day and uh, uh, living, the, living the good life. He really was. But then the sky fell in and he lost his family and lost all of his riches and uh, he lost everything. And he was um, ended up uh, just extremely poor and poverty ridden. What caused you to use Job as an example here? I think the example there, Dan, is that, that Job's wife said, curse God and die. Mm -hmm. So she chose not to trust. Mm -hmm. We don't read about her anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the end of her. She, she kind of fell off the Bible pages. There. there you go. But what did Job do? Job did trust. Uh -huh. And because of Job's trust, in the end, he got double. Mm -hmm. Everything that he had was replaced twofold. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we have to understand is that when we go through these trials and, and challenges that mm -hmm. we go through in our lives, we can make one of two choices. Uh -huh. We can either say, forget it. I'm done with it. I don't trust this faith anymore. I don't believe the Bible anymore. Or we can say, I don't understand this, God. I, I, you're going to have to, you know, I know when I get to heaven, Dan, I'm going to ask mm -hmm. God some questions. Oh, yeah. We all will have some questions. <laughs> you know, questions. I'm going to be celebrating His glory, but God, I, okay, it's over now. I'm here. Can you tell me why this happened? Uh -huh. You know, and, and at that point in time, you know, I laugh about it, but at the same time, I don't think God's ever going to explain. He didn't explain to Job, hey, here's what's going to happen. Yeah. I'm going to do this, but if you'll stick with me, 
I'm going to bless you with double. Mm -hmm. No, Job had to make a conscious decision, mm -hmm. which his wife didn't make that decision. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we have to understand is that's what the Bible teaches us is to be faithful. Mm -hmm. And he uses flawed individuals like me <laughs> to, to accomplish his purpose as he did with Job. And Job become uh, one of the main characters in the Old Testament and uh, revered by those who, uh, who believe in faith. Uh, great book and I want you to pick it up and it's available on Amazon. Start here and go anywhere. You like the title of that? I do. Making Good Choices, Recovering from Bad Ones. Richie Hughes is the author, and he's, uh, he's a Cleveland uh, native and uh, went away for a while, but you came back, and now he's working with his father and building a new uh, Holiday Inn Express up here on exit 30, uh, 27. 27. Exit 27, and uh, manages the uh, Mountain View uh, uh, Hotel, which used to be Holiday Inn as Correct. well. Correct. But uh, this book is available uh, on um, Amazon.com and most any bookstore. I'm sure you can get it at Pathway or White Wing uh, here, in, here in town. Lifeway, yeah. All, all the it's, it's available. And uh, if you want to know more about it, you have a website, right? I do. It's uh, richiehughes.org. It's just my name, R-I-C-H-I-E-H-U-G-H-E-S dot O-R-G. Mm -hmm. There you see it on the screen. So check it out. Uh, pick up the book. I'm sure you will be blessed. Uh, I've been blessed just talking about it here this morning, Richie. Appreciate you coming in. And I'll have to I'll have to read that. I uh, love to go out on my boat and get me a good book and just sit there and listen to the water and read a little bit. So it's been uh, been fun this morning to learn about this. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you. We're out of time. Thanks for joining us on the Tennessee Valley this morning. Uh, more tomorrow. Hope you'll join us in. Right now it's 6:30 and 66 degrees. 7:30, Dan. Don't, Is it? Don't what did I say? 7:30. You said 6:30. Well, I lied. <laughs> it's 7:30. Don't scare people. Have a great day. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye bye.